What's up you outcasts? Welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be talking about getting started in art. Um, I'm only going to be talking about things that I feel like are important for beginner artists. And I also just want to give a bit of a disclaimer out here. And that is that I've been drawing for nine years. Uh, and even with that experience, I don't feel like I'm qualified enough to give beginner advice. But... I wrote down what I think would be good for beginners for getting started in art, um, and I did ask for help by other people as well, and I will be giving their advice at the end. Um, so, yeah, so it's going to be a mix of advice that I thought of and advice that I've gotten from other people. Um, so sorry if I come off a bit um, unsure in this video, um, it's just that... Um, I guess I'm not fully confident in my art. I don't, I'm not saying my artwork is bad. I definitely believe it, it is improving, especially because I went through my old sketchbooks not too long ago, like about a few days ago, and I realized, wow, I've come very far. <laughs> but even with that, I still don't believe that I am fully there yet. So just to be aware of that. Um, so yeah, let's get into the advice that I have for you guys. All right. So the first thing that I want to say is to not worry about what art supplies you have in this moment right now. You are just getting started, so getting professional art supplies um, is not necessarily what you should be focus on right now, focusing in on right now. Just a lot of people seem to think that they need a Cintiq to get into art, or they need to have Copic markers, or having, you know, Daniel Smith watercolors or something like that. Just focus on what you have right now. Having professional art supplies and not knowing how to use them just defeats the purpose of having that. You know, you need to learn all with what you have and then move on to the more expensive stuff. Um, I'd only really recommend getting more expensive stuff if you were to take on commissions, especially with traditional art. Um, but right now, if you're just doing things to um, for yourself, I would not think about getting professional art supplies just yet. Another thing that a lot of people don't understand is that it takes years to get good at art, and pretty much anything. It takes years of a practice to get where you want to be. Hell, I'm really 10 years into drawing next year, because I started when I was 10, and I'm still not happy with where I am right now. Um, I could show you guys a comparison of what my art used to look like back when I was drawing, when I was about maybe 10 or 11 and where I'm at right now, and there is a big improvement, but of course, with my art right now, it still needs a lot of improvement. So, just be patient. There's gonna be so many bumps in the road. You may not always know what you're doing half the time, but try not to put so much pressure on yourself because it does take years to get good at what, you, at what you're doing. And I think that's the one thing that like, keeps me going is to knowing that there's still a lot that I need to improve on but I know that I don't need all of that right away because that, that eventually will come to me uh, if I'm persistent and I'm willing to learn and willing to improve hope that makes sense <laughs> also another thing is that comparison is killer please do not compare yourself to somebody else as that is just ready to kill your drive right then and there um, because someone may be on a, you know, you could be comparing yourself to someone who's been drawing for 15 years and you've only been drawing for five, or you, you could be comparing yourself to someone who's been drawing for eight years and you've only been drawing for two years. It's kind of something that, you know, that person may have had, that person may have had, you know, better access to education, or maybe they had internet before you did, or anything like that you know we're not always giving we're not always dealt the same cards you know so don't try to beat yourself up over that and and also you want to focus on your art and not their art also at the start don't worry too much about your art being bad because we all start somewhere and the best advice that I've ever gotten is that you're just getting it all out of your system even uh, with artists, you know, who are veterans, um, and you're having one of those days where you just can't seem to draw anything, 
that doesn't mean that you're a bad artist, you're just having a bad day, and you're just getting all that bad shit out of your system in order to make some new fantastic pieces that you can be really proud of. I don't know about me, but sometimes I will create a piece, well, kind of like the one I'm making right now, <laughs> it's got me this way where I will make something and I'm like, holy fuck, how did I do that? And it, it gets me so excited and I get, oh my god, like, oh my god, I made something so incredible and it just, it gets me so hyped up and I love it. There's even some drawings that I have like right now that I made years ago and I still kind of get that rush a little bit. And, um, and that rush is like one of the best feelings as an artist. So you're just getting all that out of your system to make a masterpiece that you'll be really, really proud of. Also, you won't realize how far you've come until you look back, especially with what I mentioned earlier with me going back with my old sketchbooks, made me feel so much better about myself. Especially because I used to think I was so bad at drawing humans, I'm not as bad as I used to be, and I'm actually improved quite a lot, and I just never realized. So, yeah, just wanted to point that out. <laughs> also, when it comes to learning furry art, learning human anatomy will help so much essentially a lot of it is just adding fur to those little uh, to those regular human anatomy that's all really what a lot of it is so learning that is absolutely fantastic and i know it's really boring trust me you really need the motivation in order to learn it and hell right now i use it when i don't have inspiration to draw anything i'm like you know what this is a good time to practice and Really, learning human anatomy will help simplify a lot of things in order to make more simplistic art. So, yeah, you're better off learning the basics, and it just will help your art look ten times better. Really need to stress that, because there's so many people who would just draw simplified things with not knowing how to draw some of... on how to draw these things with, without it being stylized. And... When you're looking to improve your art, be sure to find other artists to critique your art. Um, which is why you should always put your art online and be like, Hey guys, what's some critique that I need for my art? Um, for example, a common critique that I get is that my shading sometimes is a bit off, which it is. I think I've improved a lot about that though. My backgrounds could be a bit boring. That's been improving though, I think in my opinion at least. And my anatomy can be very off and my proportions definitely with snouts i've noticed my snouts are very disproportionate um and just you know get that critique and in order to help uh on order to see uh, where you can improve and look up certain tutorials on okay so i'm not very good at drawing masculine lips let me have a look at a few tutorials or look at a few references in order to make you know masculine lips look more masculine and not feminine also, this one is one thing that I always say to myself, especially when I have a piece that I'm looking at and I'm really worried about screwing up, is that I can always remind myself, I always remind myself that I can always remake the piece. It doesn't always have to look perfect, especially when later down the line, I can remake that piece if I want. So keep that in mind is that I can always go back and remake the piece. So it literally isn't that big of a deal. For example, I have one piece of artwork that unfortunately got ruined because it got water on it and I can always go back and remake it. And it's really funny too because I was with a bunch of friends when it happened and none of us know what happened. All we know is that one of, how, one of the, pe the piece got wet and I decided, you know what, it's fine. I'm not gonna get angry at you guys. I can always remake the piece, it's okay. You know? So like, try not- I understand that like, it can be very frustrating, but- I, I, I understand that it can be very frustrating, but you can always remake the piece. So, try to keep that in mind, and, and get that little bit of um, pressure off your shoulders, because you can always remake it. And the last two things that I have is to use guidelines and to use references. Now, one of my biggest things that I should have done when I was first getting into artwork was to use guidelines. I never used to use guidelines. I would just look at a picture and just draw it freehand. And that worked for a while, but it really did not do anything for me at all. I never really learned how to draw things on my own. And once I start 
you know, learning how to use guidelines and start using guidelines, that's when I started how to learning to draw things by myself without just looking at a picture and drawing it. And that's why you should always use your guidelines, you know, using your line of action, you know, drawing a circle for the head and for the body and also um, for proportions, you know, uh, seven and a half heads are, can fill into one body and that sort of thing. Well, that's really more for proportions. Uh, but using all of that can uh, really help you, you know, break out of uh, relying on references and knowing where everything can go. And yeah, so I really, really heavily recommend using guidelines. And also, uh, even without using guidelines, thing, uh, things can look really off if you don't use them. So they're really, really helpful, and I see so many, some artists do that, and it's really helpful for, and it's really useful to use guidelines, so yeah. And then when it comes to references, I see a lot of people will say that references are cheating, which it's not. How are you supposed to learn anything if you don't look at a reference? And also, even if you've been drawing for years, and don't know how to do a certain thing it's not cheating you know you're always gonna want to add stuff to your visual library and sometimes you can't you can't always call everything from memory you know especially when you say you have not had a lot of practice you know drawing baseball bats or um or drawing you know motorcycles or cars or anything like that you're gonna want to look at a reference or how to do a certain pose you know um you can't always recall that, so you always need to have a look at a reference, or even just in case, you know, sometimes you're like, huh, I'm not entirely sure, I think I can do it, but I'm not entirely sure, you know, just even get a reference, you know, up just in case, or have multiple references, that's always a really good thing. So, references aren't cheating, they're there to help you, and they are resources, and sometimes even in art classes and stuff, you, and in college, you're gonna need references, so... Yeah. So now I'm gonna move on to the things that other people have said. So yeah, here we go. So practice, do what you're comfortable with, and enjoy the process. Stick with it. Don't become disheartened after a week. It took me six months to even remotely like my art. So stick through it. Practice, use references and tutorials, and experiment. Some art techniques like painting have a much greater practice requirement than say sketching. Never be discouraged by comparing your art to others. Everyone starts somewhere, including artists you idolize. Make sure you have a beginner mindset and don't let envy get the best of you. Don't do everything at once, like chapters in a book. Make sure to spend a good amount of time on each chapter. Colors, anatomy, gesture anatomy, perspective, face gestures, etc. Also, try to look at some popular YouTubers and artists. Also, don't do art every day and don't overwork yourself. Make plans and make sure to spend at least 30 minutes doing art. Of course, you don't need to make a masterpiece every 30 minutes, so you can just practice oversimplifying uh, those already stated chapters, drawing smooth lines, etc. It also can be said that someone who starts doing art will have difficulties controlling their hand. Oftentimes, they will look shaky. To counter that, please have at least one paper you will practice drawing lines and shapes by making huge elegant moves. Of course, you can always try bit by bit as well, but for me, making big control moves really makes the lines look more natural. Don't be scared by line art. It's okay to trace. All artists have at one point or another. The important thing is just not post your trace work and only using it as a learning tool. We don't stand art thieves. Very true. <laughs> another is learn the bones and muscles on the human or animal body. I know it might not be as exciting as jumping into foam flashy colors and shapes. And and beginners will usually say, well, I don't want to draw realism, I want to draw comics or anime art. I can guarantee that learning bones and muscle groups will skyrocket your artistic journey. Even if you don't draw realistically, just knowing where everything should be and how they react to being pulled and flexed will make drawings in general a whole lot faster. Also, speaking of different art styles, don't disregard art knowledge from them just because you're not into that style, personally. I had some art friends tell me that they needed help shading, so I recommended a book highlighting masterworks from anime, and they refused to even look at it as they said they didn't like anime. But there was a lot of really useful tips in that book that has greatly helped me with my own journey, even though I rarely draw just pure anime drawings. Always be open to different techniques from different styles. Think of it like just getting a big pick and mix of sweets. If you just take from the strawberry box, that might be just fine, but why not take some lollies, banana gummies, and chocolate mice while you're at it? 
so yeah i hope that was useful for you guys um i could this could have been a lot more that i could have been put in here but i didn't want this video to be really long even right now uh, i haven't edited everything yet i everything's still in the raw stages and it's 20 minutes long so yeah and i still consider that to be extremely long for a beginner video but i hope you guys are able to learn something from it and hopefully get you guys a bit, bit of motivation and hell if you guys want more art videos then please let me know uh because I'll, I'll be totally willing to make more um you know other than my speed paints and stuff like that but yeah uh links to all the people who submitted in art advice will be in the description i'm gonna link all their twitters because that's where i got their advice from and yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll see you guys later Bye bye You never see it coming